The final decision for Jackson's One Lake project is now just a little over a month away. So what's on the table for here and for downstream? Just in case you're unfamiliar, the One Lake project is a proposal to create a massive development near downtown Jackson that would create a 1700 acre lake. Or rather than lake, it's more like a, a broad widening of the pearl. And the purpose for the lake would be twofold. One would be to create flood control for the area. The other would be to create a waterfront area for downtown Jackson. That would include new businesses, a boardwalk, residential areas, new parks and green spaces, and water recreation. Now on the surface, this all sounds great, and it's been a really long time coming. And other cities like Omaha and Oklahoma City have done similar projects, and they've seen incredible revitalizations of their downtown, taking them from struggling areas to booming. It brings in more tourism, it brings in more tax revenue, and it's just frankly beautiful to look at. So the potential for Jackson here is huge, and for that reason, there's a lot of support from Jackson's business community. But the project has not been without setbacks or concerns. The initial plan for One Lake was a lot bigger, but there were some concerns about the impact it could have on the river and the coast downstream, as well as some of the neighborhoods. So right now, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is considering something called Alternative D, which is a good bit smaller than the initial plan and should have less of an impact downstream. Alternative D involves building a 256-foot weir in the Pearl River, which I was very disappointed to learn isn't pronounced where because I had this whole Abbott and Costello routine I was going to do. A weir is similar to a dam, but it only partially blocks the flow of water. It's really more for controlling water flow than it is for storing anything. And a weir is built for water to just flow right over the top of it. Just to give you a quick visual of what we're looking at, here's a map of what Jackson looks like right now. And here's a map of what it would look like once Alternative D goes into action. One of the things that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is looking at right now is the potential negative impacts that could come from this project. For example, the Clarion Ledger recently reported that about 200 structures would be impacted by the change in water levels, with 52 being impacted so greatly that they would probably need to either sell out or flood-proof those homes. It's not quite the same scale as when they were building the Ross Barnett Reservoir, which removed families from generational farmlands. But whenever folks' homes are impacted, it's always good to consider it. Now, the Pearl River Keeper does a lot better job than I can of explaining the environmental impacts that could come from the project. Uh, just to summarize, there's some worries about the change in flow and how it could impact fisheries, both in the river and further down on the coast, and also some endangered species that could be impacted by the lower water levels. Now, proponents say that this new plan shouldn't impact the flow downstream all that much, if at all, but that's what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has to decipher. There's actually a great example in real time of what can happen when a river weir goes bad, and that is a little bit further south from us in Walkaya Bluff, Mississippi, where the weir has been deteriorating for quite some time, and I haven't been able to find any recent updates on the repairs. Now, that weir was initially built to split the flow of the Pearl River between Louisiana and Mississippi, but as the weir has deteriorated, about 90% of the water is now going to Louisiana, and the Mississippi side is all but drying up. And I know they've been working on some repairs, but I haven't been able to find any updates. So if any of you are down in that area and can shed some light on the situation, please let me know in the comments. Now, my personal hope is that they find a way to make this work for everybody because Jackson could desperately use the boost. More businesses, more tax revenue, more folks living in the area, more folks engaged in the voting process for our city leaders. It could be a game changer for us. But I think we all agree that we don't want that to come at the expense of other parts of the state. If they approve the project in December, construction doesn't start right away. There's a period of planning and engineering first, and that could take up to two years. So don't look for any major changes to happen right off the bat. But whatever comes of that decision in December, I'll be sure and let you know.